found this today. It was a the edge of a something else, a couple of layers of fringe here. It was sewed to the bottom of something that I had taken apart. Uh, I'm just tacking it down here quickly. Um, I'm actually using it to to fill in this gap here and also give a base to this brown shape here. Let me just finish tacking it so that I can talk about it. I'm doing a lot of this sewing without worrying about the back. I know I, I've said that many times, but um, I'm going to line the back so it doesn't really matter what kind of stitches I take. I've also been thinking that a lot of beautiful textiles um, from around the world are one-sided. I don't know why that's really a problem anyway. So I just did a quick tack here. Um, let me just show you what's going on. I just found that, you know, it just happened to be sitting in the scrap basket because I keep everything. And I just really thought that it was a nice way to treat this kind of horizon here. And it, for some reason it said sunset to me, simply because it's, it's almost like the way colors sort of, the sun's colors kind of get reflected in water or something. But it also um, has a relationship to, I've been working on this one over here, to these little uh, strands that I had here before as part of the main. I, I just, I think, you know, that there's a possible story link there. So I thought that it fit in really well. But let me just talk about what I'm doing here. This was originally just, uh, you know, I just let a single strand, or it was actually a couple of ends of floss here, hang down. And I talked about them not being substantial enough because, you know, with a, something that you're going to use, these will sort of, when they wash, they're going to come apart and tangle and everything. So I'm going with the braided one. Um, and I'm actually thinking perhaps of doing a similar thing in the center to attach that eye panel. Um, but the way I'm doing this, and I, I do this a lot to create fringe, so I figured I would, I would show you. I took a six ends of uh, floss, you know, by the way, let me talk about that too. Um, these are all different colored pinks and reds that I that I dropped either in the walnut pot or I put around the tin can to blacken them up a little bit. And I like to store them this way because in, in, in addition to variation on a theme and design and we were talking about stitch, color is another way to do that. So if you're going to use red, uh, you know, a lot of times I just like to, to vary that so that they're not all the same red so that it might add dimension uh, to to one particular element that I'm doing. It comes across in general as the same color, but you know, it's not the same color. So anyway, I took one sixth strand section of floss and I divided it into four in one needle and two in another needle. And as long as you have twice as many as you have in one needle, you could do two in one needle and one in needle, one needle. Um, I've already got one here, so I think I'll just, I'll do this one here. And I just take a little stitch and then pull it out of the needle. So now I've got uh, kind of like two, two sections of four ends of floss. And then I take the second one, which has two in it, and I kind of stitch in the center of that and then take it out of the needle. And now I've got two sections of two, but if I put them together, I've got four and I usually just do a little knot there. So now I've got three, which is perfect for braiding and each one is four strands and it's nicely attached. And then I just go in and braid them. Now this is a little bit time consuming. If you wanted to do 
a lot of them, it would take you some time, but they're really nice. You know, um, braided string is, I don't know, it's just a very old style cord, simple to do. And you can do a four end braid or something fancier, but I find this to be the simplest. So I'm just going to, uh, to beef these up a little bit by doing this. And I think I can probably use this as some consistent touch throughout. And then when I get it long enough, I just go in and, and make a knot. You just be careful to push that down to where the braid ends and then snip it off. So I think I like those better. I don't know how they're going to get placed. Maybe I will couch these down, the original ones. But I also tried something here, another form of ghosting, where I thought, okay, I would just take a single end and kind of... Uh, just stitch a running stitch with a little, maybe a little thread bead and a couple of long stitches to make it look as if, you know, maybe it was there and then it moved. And I thought that could give a good uh, feel of motion. So for each one of these, I think I'm going to go back in and stitch a little uh, kind of a shadow to it, I guess you would call it. And then I'm going to end up with sort of a nice dimensional effect here.